Welcome back to another awesome video. Today we've got the HP OfficeJet Pro 8025E. However, wait, don't open that yet. It could be a trap. Wait, what do you mean? It's a trap. It could be a trap. Let's look at some of the text on the box. Internet connection is required to set up the printer. Why? How dare they? After six months, a monthly fee will be charged automatically unless canceled. Apparently they have this thing called HP Plus. HP Plus requires an HP account, ongoing connection to the internet, and the use of only original HP ink cartridge for the life of the printer. So if you choose HP Plus, you're locked in. This is one of my favorites. Periodic firmware updates main will maintain the effectiveness of these measures. That's kind of ridiculous. Did I actually buy a technology product or sign up for some sort of weird surveillance agreement with HP? Since the beginning of time, uh, inkjet printers have come with cartridges. This one though says setup cartridges are included. So what is a setup cartridge? It doesn't have enough ink to do anything more than get you set up and get you hooked on their ink delivery system. It's a trap. Uh, we have tried to get these cheapo cartridges. So we're gonna see if that works. I didn't go to marketing school, but is it really a great strategy with all this legalese to have your customer at odds with the product before you even open the box? Mm. Uh, lucky for this customer, there are tons of these printers available, new in the box, low cost on shopgoodwill.com. In our last video, we showed that you could get an Epson printer working without signing up for anything, installing any software with generic cartridges. So we're going to take one for the team here and find out if we can do this. Hack it. Yes, with HP. We're going to try to bypass all this stuff and just see how far we get. Yeah. All right, so there's our setup cartridges. Instruction man. Do not drink. Okay, that's good advice. Oh, maybe, maybe you take it. Yeah, there you go. I think, you know, this feels a lot lighter than the Epson. It, it, it probably is a lower product line than the Epson, but it still has those multiple functions of scanning and printing and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. It is a touch panel, so go ahead and uh, English. You have selected English, okay. USA, checking the printer. One or more cartridges are missing. The generic cartridge uh, website said that you can only use these if you haven't activated HP+. So we're gonna make sure we don't do that. Okay, so we got the cartridges installed. I think it'll probably complain about these being uh, generic cartridges, but go ahead and shut the lid. Let's see what it says. This thing pivots, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. Soft. All right, so we put those generic cartridges in. What it's saying is, you know, you got some new cartridges in there, a brand new printer, but we want you to use our cartridges because they have all these chips. However, I think threatening the printer won't work. Let me go do a quick Google search. I think there's a way to get around this message. I think there are buttons down here. But you, okay, there we go. Ah, support menu. So I just started tapping and I got a support menu. Okay, system configuration menu. All right, hardware failure status, set boot mode, trade at OOBE, UBI. What's an UBI? You say, okay, trade supplies disabled. Press okay to enable it. Okay. Okay, so I've, en I've enabled something. So let's get out of here. Press X to X, so turn the printer off and on. Okay, powering off. All right, so we're almost booted back up here. Let's see, checking the printer. HP cannot guarantee the quality or reliability with non-HP chips. Load plain paper, okay. All right, printing the alignment page. Okay. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna scan that. So what does it say? Pl place it on the, on the scanner glass and touch scan. All right, so we're past the first hurdle, which is not using those setup cartridges. The next hurdle looks like to complete setup, get HP software. We don't want HP software. Well, we're gonna see if we can get this thing working without the HP software. Cancel. Okay, okay, here we go. Without HP software, you will not be able to take advantage of HP Plus. Oh, horrors. <laughs> oh, are you sure you would like to get the HP software? So I wanna cancel it. I wanna cancel getting the HP software. Firmware updates can improve, enhance, <laughs> or lock you in. No, I don't want firmware updates, okay? HP recommends enabling firmware updates. Ah, here we go. I do not want an auto update, I want to notify. Thank you for choosing HP. Okay, so there we go. We do not want to let this thing access the internet. What I need to do is figure out the MAC address and then I'm gonna to go to my router. Right there, MAC 
So I'm going to go to my Ubiquiti router right now and tell the router to never let this MAC address access the internet. So it will only be allowed to access my local network. So we're going to key in the password. We've already blocked this guy at the router level from accessing the internet, and then we're going to try to connect to it from a couple of laptops. Okay, so I'm on a Windows 11 laptop. I'm going to hit Windows key R, type control. I bring up the control panel. I click on view devices and printers, and then printers and scanners. And then I've got all these things. I want to add device. And it actually, let's see if it finds it. It actually did find that. Let's add the device. And it says it's connecting. All right, so Windows key R, run notepad. This is a test. Control P. And switch over to the HP OfficeJet Pro. Yeah. All right. All right, so we're great on a PC. Now we're going to try it on a Mac. Go ahead and try to print something on the Mac there. I so the good news is we were able to set this printer up without giving it any access to the internet, without installing any software on these laptops, without agreeing to any license agreement. We bypassed everything. So good news. This has actually went a lot better than I expected. Next, we're going to try the scanner. We'll just do a quick scan of Bill and Dave here, see how they feel about their product. Well, that's kind of cool. It actually has a preview on the display of what you're about to scan. That's kind of neat. So obviously they want to use an app for the scan to the computer, whereas the Epson could just use a network share. Uh, we'll see if we can initiate the scanning from the computer. Hopefully that'll work. So that did work initiating from the computer. It does work from the devices and printers view. If you right click on it and say start scan. In Windows 11, you have to kind of go an extra step to get to that view. Uh, in Windows 10, I think you just hit view devices and, and printers from the control panel, but you gotta get to this view, right click and start scan. Okay, this actually looks a little bit nicer than the, than the Epson one. It's got estimated cartridge levels, supply status, it's got all sorts of stuff. So. I don't know why, but it takes a second for the web interface to come up. Let's see what it says about the network on this thing. Uh, log in with a pen. Okay, so you can log in into the and, and take a look at that. Well, that's about it. This is not quite as exhaustive of a review as we did for uh, the Epson. You know, this printer was just sort of an impulse buy just because it was cheap. And I was pleasantly surprised to see how easy it was to set up. And it seems to be working fine. We'll see, you know. Obviously at these prices, it would be wasteful, but we can get rid of it when these cartridges run out, you know, or we can just use the setup cartridges. But anyway, that's about it. And we'll see you next time for another video. We'll see you next time for another awesome video. Bye.